Lesson 3. Working with sets. We can create queries that are more interesting by adding sets of members to the column or row axis. A set must contain one or more members. We can create a set by enclosing a comma separated list of duples inside of braces or by using an MDX function that returns a set. We must specify on which axis the set should appear. If we have more than one member, we need to explicitly create a set by enclosing the list of members in braces. Set may contains elements from the hierarchy. The children function returns the children for the supplied member. The descendants function returns a set of descendants of a supplied member at a specified level or distance. The level from which the descendants should be retrieved can be identified by reference. If no level is specified, the level of the specified member is assumed. The level from which the descendants should be retrieved can be identified by distance from the specified member.
by changing the value of the metric distance for 4, we receive sales data for each model from the USA. The member and level arguments serve as the starting point for the generation of the returned set. Flags determine the set returned. If no flag is specified, the descendant members of the identified level are returned. This is functionally equivalent to specifying the self flag. Self and after flag instructs the function to return the descendant members of the identified level, and descendant members in the levels below the identified level. The add calculated members function can also be used in conjunction with sets. Measures may be grouped into sets. The definition of the set may refer to members of two different attributes.
to make reports more readable we need to combine the tuples of one set with the tuples of another to form more complex multipart tuples. This is done using the cross join function. Each tuple of each set is combined with the tuples of the other sets in a multiplicative operation. In the cross join function we cannot use the same hierarchy twice. The non-empty function returns a set of tuples that are not empty, based on the cross product of the two supplied sets. The filter function returns a set based on the supplied filter condition. We can think of the WHERE clause as an additional axis within the query's cube space. This axis, often referred to as the slicer axis, has one position occupied by the tuple assigned to the WHERE clause. The member, or member combinations, at this one position influence every tuple in the query's cube space. Only those rows and columns are removed in which all attributes are empty.
Filtering restricting the number of rows or columns also can be defined in the WHERE clause. We cannot use the same hierarchy twice, in SELECT and WHERE clauses. Dimension attributes can be used twice. This fact we can see in the example. Do you want to learn new skills in the fastest and most effective way? Learn with video tutorials com.